Here today I'm looking at a system of hedging against extreme crises in the stock market. I'm using the SPY and the Australian ASX 200 measure. They're the big indexes for the efficient market buy and hold people, which this one's aimed at. I'm doing others for those who are more hedge fund oriented and different methods. But it's based on an author, Dom Renbo, Denbo's Seeing Tomorrow Minimax Regret Criterion. And I use EVT Estimation as a Hedge from the EVIA Library. I do not use the Delta. And we have CP triggers, change point triggers from the Rebecca Killick's Change Point Library and What was the other one? And Madison's Extreme Change Point Library, which do, do signal a significant market downturns, generally before they happen. There is an underlying shift in the means and the variances, which war gives you a warning. So people that say you can't see a crash happening, you can't see 100% of crash happening, but this picked... 2001 and 2007 and 2020, which is a pretty good track record, but I'm only showing 2001 and 2007 here. So, okay, there's the code. It's quite complex. I haven't got time to go through it here. I'm not a very good teacher. I'm a economist and econometrician. I'm not, I'm not a teacher. I've got the ideas. I have trouble explaining them. The code's complex. I'm going to make a couple of videos where I go through it and break down the maths behind it. Um, and once I'm sure it's absolutely robust, I'll put it online to make it available. But so far it looks good. You know that if it's not, it's not up, it didn't pass the complete, complete testing or I've died because I'm not well. But hopefully uh, it will, and it'll help a lot of people. I'm here to help. I'm not here to be an influencer. I'm not here to be a scammer. I don't want your money. I don't tell you what to invest in. You choose that yourself. You're the best knowledge of your own future. Or, well, it doesn't seem many people are, but you should be. And we'll run the first back test. Run the second back test, and we'll run the third back test. And we'll print out the results for the first one. There's the, the EVI peak over thresholds plot test at 95, 99% probability. There is the extreme tail with the outliers. Now we run the results to show you what we get as a hedging parameters. The hedge fraction is 0.422 for the initial 2001 SPY experiment. The number of contracts needed was 12 SPY 100 contracts for a 100,000 portfolio that is. The EVT variance percent, VAR percent was 5.8 and the result percent was 0.08 and we'll look lastly at the Dembo Alpha which is the Minimax Regret Criterion for the Portfolio. And that was 0.5778 with a regret cap of 0.337392. Now, I'm going to have to explain this in a separate video. There was a lot of maths went involved into calculating that. Um, just to let you know, it's a, it's a alpha based on hedging with the Minimax criterion. Okay, I hope this is helpful. It's a hot, if I am well enough to keep on working, it's 
I'll release it because it will really help you in times of crashes. It's not 100% guaranteed to predict all crashes. Nothing's 100% guaranteed in life, I can tell you. Not even taxes. You know, the joke goes, nothing's certain except death and taxes. Well, there's only one thing certain, that's death, not even taxes, because a lot of people don't pay them at all. So nothing in life is certain except death. And that's not life, that's death. So there is nothing in life certain. After that, Rave, let's get back to what I was discussing. Of For those who are not efficient market, buy and hold portfolio people, which is the most, because most mutual funds, uh, superannuation funds, and uh, general fund managers use that method. Hedge funds don't, and uh, for people who are into that sort of thing, I'm going to do a, a modified pairs trading fund and a, a, stoc a Kelly Stochastic Optimal Fund. Okay, are there three I've got in the pipeline. There's considerable amount of work done towards them at the moment. I've got to try and explain this code. With the, with the uncertainty in markets as it is, with Australia in a huge bubble, which can be explained by there's a lot of superannuation money slosh, sloshing around, and Australian superannuation fund managers are lazy. They don't want to look at off-market investments, you know, maybe in property or... Uh, I don't know, supporting industry, they're not interested in that. They just think, stick it in the market because if it goes bad, they can blame the market and collect their fees anyway. In America, the bubble is not quite so, so the same thing. There is a lot of 401k money, but it's just that 80% of the American market is held by the wealthy and the wealthy love fascist regimes. Mussolini was in bed with big business and the wealthy. So they think Trump's going to be a marvellous thing for them, so they're all gangbusters investing. But, yeah, I think it's time to take stock and be wise if you're just a normal person. And that's why I'm trying to help you with this. This will, if you've got 100,000 up to 300,000 of my examples invested in your savings, this will give you a warning of an imminent crash. Not 100% guaranteed, but it's picked the big ones. It picked 2001, 2007 and 2020. I didn't try 1987. The data's a bit harder to get hold of. Okay. So I'll sign off there. And uh, thanks for listening. And I, I hope eventually to have it up available and to help people. Thanks. Bye.